What's up guys? It's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com. Today we are throwing down another delicious recipe. This is my grilled stuffed flank steak. Six ingredients, an hour, you'll have a beautiful, beautiful dinner on the table. Let's do it. We're gonna kick off this recipe by preheating our grill to 450 degrees. I'm using charcoal today, but this works beautifully on a pellet grill. It also works great on your propane cooker, whatever you've got in the backyard. There you go. All right, I mentioned six ingredients, and that is totally true. This is a very, very simple recipe. You wanna start with a flank steak. It's typically about one and a half pounds. Looks like this. Look for really dark red color and beautiful white marbling in between. You're gonna need one red bell pepper, a couple of cups of baby spinach that's been washed and dried, two tablespoons of sliced red onion, thinly sliced, six ounces of mozzarella cheese, and then your favorite beef seasoning. I'm using my beef seasoning because it's my favorite. All right, we're gonna pop our red onion directly on the grill grates for our first step in this recipe. Right over the coals high temperature, and we want to blister the outside of that red bell pepper, get it nice and roasty. It'll bring out the sweetness. It'll make it super soft and the perfect portion of filling for our flank steak. And that's what we need to do next is prep our flank steak. So for a stuffed flank steak, you want it to be nice and flat. So I'm gonna cover it with, I have saran wrap on the bottom, the flank steak, and then a little more saran wrap on top. This is gonna keep things clean. And then we're gonna pound this. You can either use a meat mallet or my favorite, the cast iron skillet. <laughs> and you're just gonna hit this guy. And the goal here in addition to getting out any extra aggression, <laughs> is to bring your flat iron to a nice, even thickness all the way across. It'll make it much easier to roll and it'll cook much easier also. <laughs> Have a nice, secure work surface. I'm gonna check my pepper, because Todd can smell it. Probably gonna take like, I don't know, one to two to three minutes per side. So just give that a nice little flip as we do everything else for our flank steak, which includes pulling the top saran wrap off and leaving the one on the bottom. The bottom saran wrap is gonna help us when we go to roll it up later. Before we do any of our filling, we wanna season this side of our flank steak. Just a nice generous sprinkle of my beef seasoning, or you can use equal parts salt and pepper. These are very simple and classic flavors we have going on in here, so we don't want anything that's so bold, it's gonna overwhelm either the meat or the filling. On top of our seasoned flank steak, we're gonna sprinkle some of our spinach. And with your toppings here, you don't need to go all the way to the edge. On one side, I actually recommend leaving about a half an inch to an inch where there's no toppings. On top of our spinach, we're gonna sprinkle our thinly sliced red onions. Now these are raw red onions, so they will have a stronger flavor. If you prefer a more mild onion flavor, you can cook these down a little bit on the grill, or you could substitute for something more mild like a green onion that's not gonna have as sharp of a flavor, but I really like the boldness of the red onion in here. Flip your pepper. It's multitasking. If you want to save yourself a step, you can actually buy roasted red peppers in a jar and have those ready to go. It'll cut down your prep time a little bit. On top of our red onions, yeah, red onions. Red peppers on the grill, red onions on the meat. On top of the red onions, I'm gonna lay our mozzarella. You can use um, shredded mozzarella here, but if you do, I highly recommend not buying the pre-shredded stuff. 
buy a block of cheese and shred it yourself. It'll make a much meltier mozzarella in the center. Yeah, this is what we're looking for right here. Come here. See how it's blackened and it's kind of wrinkly on the spots where it's not blackened? That means the skin's gonna peel away nice and easy for us later. When you pull that off, you can either put it in a like zip top plastic baggie or you can just use another piece of saran wrap and wrap it up for just a minute. And this is gonna allow the pepper to cool down enough that we can handle it, but it's also gonna steam the pepper a little bit so that it continues to cook through and that skin will peel away really easily. It only takes a minute. Okay, after a couple minutes, unwrap your pepper and look at this. Most of the skin here is just gonna peel right off with our saran wrap. Anything that doesn't peel off with your saran wrap, you can just use the tip of your knife to gently scrape away. Now that our pepper is peeled, I'm just gonna use my knife to slice away the meatiest part, leaving the seeds and the stem. And simply take your bell peppers and slice them into strips. This is gonna add the perfect balance of sweetness and beautiful color to the inside of our flank steak. Simply sprinkle some of your bell peppers in the center of your flank steak. All right, here comes the fun part. Todd and I have a bet to see if I can actually wrap this up into the flank steak because I did pile it pretty high. That's where the saran wrap is the magic, my friends, is because you can lift with the saran wrap and kind of tuck and roll all at the same time. And that spinach should kind of compress for you as you roll your flank steak. I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be fine. I mean, I did stuff this one pretty full, but I'm confident. And then we stuff and we roll and we stuff and we roll and we roll and we roll and we roll. Gently remove your saran wrap. You wanna keep your flank steak rolled up as nicely as you can. Like I said, we lost a little bit of our filling, but that's okay. And then it's time to wrap it with butcher's twine. And you want your butcher's twine to go around about every inch and a half throughout your flank steak so that it stays nice and tight. The easiest way is just to take each strand individually, pull it up, tie it, and then cut it off. Normally, I do it like the butcher's way where I use all one string and I like loop it and tie it and cut it. However, this flank steak is very full and that method requires a lot of lifting and I really don't want this to fall apart. So by tying each one, I can really make sure it gets super, super taut on its own and I don't have to move it around too much. Ta-da, we're in business. So I'm gonna season this on the outside one more time because we season the inside, remember? We need the outside seasoned really well too with that beef rub on all sides. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands, then we're gonna cook it on our preheated grill. We're gonna get this right onto our grill grates that are nice and preheated again, 450 degrees. And this is gonna take about five minutes per side, so just give it a flip every few minutes. The whole thing's gonna take about 25 to 30 minutes to cook through. We're looking for an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been about five minutes. It's already smelling great. Let's give this guy its first flip. Oh, look at that. That nice, beautiful color from having preheated grill grates and nice hot coals. Okay, we're close. We're already at like 110, 115, so this will probably be the last five minutes or so here. Okay, my temperatures are right where I want them to be, which means it's time for me to take my beautiful stuffed flank steak off the grill and get it onto my cutting board 
We're gonna let this rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before we slice and serve. Our steak's been resting, let's give it a slice. Now, we have all of these strings that we've used to tie this together, right? I don't think now is the time to take them off. I actually like to leave the strings on while I slice because it gives me a beautiful guide for how thick each piece can be. And then I trim them off right before serving. So that's why I'm leaving the strings on for now. But don't worry, they will come off before we eat. I'm gonna do one nice slice, just kind of right down the middle here. So we get a pretty cross section. This looks beautiful. Sliced, beautiful, cheesy. I can't wait to dive in. I'm gonna eat one of these little end pieces here with the crispy edges. Now this is when you take the string off, okay? Don't forget, you don't wanna eat the string. Oh, I took the filling out with the string. Party foul. All right. I'm known for taking notoriously huge bites, but I do wanna be able to talk about this a little bit. And I forgot a fork. It all just came together, you know? The first thing that I got was that crispy crunch of the crust from cooking it over the high heat on the outside. And that gave this beautiful textural and flavor component first thing to hit my tongue. And then we got to the inside. It was creamy from the cheese, sweet from those roasted red peppers, and then the pop from that purple onion. This is a stellar dish, beautiful for a dinner party. Awesome if you just need a quick weeknight dinner, done in under an hour, six ingredients, get it on the table next to a beautiful salad or maybe some pasta. I'd eat this all the freaking time. I hope you guys give this a try. If you do, snap a photo, post it online, use the hashtag HeyGrillHey, that way I can see it and cheer you on on your journey to becoming a backyard barbecue hero. See you next time. Yum! The angels are singing, yum. Todd, I sang in one of my videos and somebody commented that I should not quit my day job <laughs> to become a singer. <laughs> I agree, no, no, I wholeheartedly agree.